I was about 31 years old when I decided to take my first uh, maiden voyage to Europe. And it was about a, I'd say about a six week trip, solo trip all on my own. I was working at the United Nations at the time and there I found my colleagues were mostly well-traveled all over the world. And uh, so I asked them which would be the most ideal way to go and ship to take. Or In those days, uh, ship travel was more glamorous and not cheaper, of course. And so uh, I finally found uh, a, rec a recommendation for the Andrea Doria. The ship was just uh, one of the masterpieces of beauty and luxury. It was about eight hours before we were leaving the ship. A few good friends that uh, we made on the ship got together for dancing and drinking and having last minute goodbyes. They were playing Arrivederci Roma. It was a very popular song at that time, they were saying goodbye Rome. Well, we heard a big crunch, big crunch underneath the ship. That's what it sounded like. The ship shook dramatically and people on the dance floor fell down and fell over each other, the musicians. Instruments fell on the floor, creating a big racket and all the drinks, glasses falling all over the place. My first thoughts ran back to the Titanic and I thought, well, we must have crushed into an iceberg. And then I said, no, 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 off Nantucket there are no icebergs. People panically just ran all over the place, running out looking for exits. And immediately the ship started to list dramatically. And that was the scary part. The one thing that lured me on to the Andrea Doria was that it was known as the unsinkable new Italian liner. So when my friend Danny was sitting around and talking, he said, well, look, there's nothing to worry about because we're close to Nantucket and people will hear about this and um, the people will come to save us. And the fact is it's an unsinkable ship. As a matter of fact, it was sinking very slowly, but very definitely. I began to think, yes, it's a possibility we just so slowly slip into the sea. And uh, th th those are my thoughts. And it was very peaceful, sort of. Uh, peaceful because I had two friends around me and other people. And, well, we all go together. The Italian captain uh, s sent out a message, an SOS. We're having a hard time of it but he never once mentioned that the ship is sinking. So the Swedish captain sent that message to the French captain, and the French captain says, well, what's happening? Is the ship going to stay afloat? Is it sinking or what? And the Swedish captain said, I don't know. But the French captain said, well, we must take this chance, even though it's very expensive for a steamship to make a return voyage, a lot of money involved. But they made that decision and they came back and they were one of the lot ones who took the largest numbers of passengers. And so all of the people were rescued, actually, except the ones that were killed in the actual collision. Unfortunately, one of my shipboard friends was in one of those cabins, an Italian war bride. Rescue operation took, uh, I'd say, about uh, maybe three or four hours. We were all standing on the uh, deck of the Ile de France and watching in this distance, the Andrea Doria go down very slowly, very sad, very sad. And all the Italian crewmen threw all their valuables into the sea and crying, grown men taking out their white handkerchiefs and crying. And some of us, of course, were also crying because it's very sad. It's like a, watching a human being go down and seeing all the flotsam around it with the, with the lifeboats around it. And then it went down, boom, and it was quite moving. And uh, that gave the permission to the uh, Ile de France to leave, but not before its, its custom at sea, where the, the saving ship makes three rounds around the fallen sister ship with its uh, tricolor flag flying and blasting, you know, these blasts that you hear of ships when they take off. And that was very moving too. It just made this circle as though you were burying a person. 